Hi everyone. I thought I would show you today um, what to do if you have a problem with your stretched ears. Um, so if you have a blowout, um, so basically you've stretched too fast and you've tore the inside of your ear, this will work too. For me what I've done is I've slept with my plugs in and I've laid most of the night on this side so I've squished my ear in my sleep and now my ear hates me. So what you do is you take your plugs out and can you see in the hole there's like a little swollen bit there that's the bit where I've squished it and see how the hole's not even. Normally I've got a perfectly circular hole but I've squished it in my sleep. So what you do this works for a blowout as well. The only difference with a blowout is um, you will downsize after doing this. Whereas me, I'll just put this. I will put the same plug back in once I've soaked my ears. Um, but if you've got a um, blowout, so you've tore the inside of your ear, then you downsize by at least one size. So what you do is you take a cup of warm water that's been boiled and then cooled a little bit, obviously because you don't want to burn your ears. And dissolve into that a um, half teaspoon of sea salt. You want to use sea salt because table salt has iodine in. Um, and that can irritate your ears. Um, I know it's used to like clean surgery sites and stuff. But it's not necessary for this. So sea salt's best. And what you do is you dip your ear like so in the glass. And just tilt it slightly and make sure the hole is underwater. And what you do is you soak your ear like this for 10 minutes. Do this two or three times a day. I'll do this three. Two is the bare minimum. Three is better. And for each time you do it, do it for 10 minutes. And you just soak it. Get your ear nice and warm and... It cleans out anything. Just make sure that your ear stays nice and clean because you don't want it to get infected or anything. So you soak it for 10 minutes. I'm doing sea salt soaks on mine just because it helps soothe it and it'll stop, it'll make it calm down. And then what you do is once you have soaked your ear for 10 minutes, so I'm trying not to get photographs of my kids on on thing so if, if I keep moving don't worry about it and you'll have to excuse the slightly shaky shot I'm holding my phone in my hand so my ear has been soaking now for 10 minutes and as you can see it's not bleeding or anything it's just a bit poofy and swollen on the inside it's because I've lay on it too long and then what you do if you've got a blowout if it's bleeding I'd probably recommend just leaving the plugs out you know that's what I've done in the past. Yes, okay, you sacrifice a size or two, but at the end of the day, it's better to not have your ear fall off. Um, so what I've done in the past, because um, I have had a blow at once, um, this when I was at the smaller sizes, and I just left my earrings out, and I left it like this, letting the air get to it, letting the tissue relax will help. And then what you do, once it's obviously not bleeding or anything, because you don't want any open wounds, you take vitamin E oil. Um, or in my case, I use cocoa butter, because cocoa butter has got, um, if I can get it to focus, it's got vitamin E in the um, cocoa butter. Um, and my ears love this stuff. If I can get some out. So I'm trying to squeeze it with one hand. So I've got some cocoa butter and what I'm going to do is lube up my lobe, make sure it's all covered in that lovely cocoa butter and then what you want to do, probably easier if I took my second hole out but I'm leaving that in because that's not been stretched for long and what I'm doing is I'm just going to massage my ears and you want to do this every time you have soaked your ear in the warm salty water and massage your ears for about 10 minutes and just keep massaging it rubbing it it encourages blood flow it will help break down any potential scar tissue because if you have scar tissue your ears aren't going to want to stretch anymore if you do go further i'm at my goal size so i'm not worried about that 
I tend to hover around about my goal size, which is um, double zero and which is 10 mil and 12. So I'm 12 at the moment, but I tend to hover between the two. Gives me the advantage then I can wear double flare plugs because my ears are stretched a little bit bigger. And you just massage your ear. This will help comfort your ear. It'll help settle it down. And so my ear is nice and massaged now. And it's calming down. The swelling's going down. Um, and then what you do, like I said, if you've tore your earlobe, um, vitamin E oil is good, but just make sure your ear's not bleeding. You don't want to rub oils and lotions and stuff into open wounds because you could risk infection. So for me, because I've squished my ear, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my plugs out for my plug out in this ear for an hour or two. Just let it all calm back down, keep massaging it a little bit, and then I'll put my plug back in after. If you've got a, a tear or cut, so you've got like a bit of a blowout or something, um, then what I recommend you do is you downsize by at least one size, um, depending. Um, so if you put the um, previous size in and you can still feel pressure, you're going to have to downsize another size. Basically, what you want to do is remove any pressure. So if you if you downsize by one size and you can't feel pressure anymore, great, that's fine. You can downsize to that size. Do the sea salt soaks two or three times a day. Do the massaging after you've done the sea salt soaks to get your ear to calm down um, it, and help promote healing and blood flow. Um, and then let your ear fully heal. Keep doing the sea salt soaks and everything. Um, and then don't even consider trying to stretch back up to the size you want to be until at least six weeks. I'd say that'd be a minimum. I'd probably leave it a bit longer. Um, and then um, just stretch up really slowly. So maybe go for the taping method instead where you just put a little bit of PTFE tape around um, just a little bit each week and stretch up really slowly. Give your ear a chance to accommodate the new size. Don't rush it. Um, and, you know, just take it steady from there. Um, and yeah, and then your ears won't hate you. And, uh, also when your ears are healed, um, don't sleep in your plugs. <laughs> um, especially if you're like 12 mil, um, 12 mil and up, I'd say 10 mil and up. I wouldn't recommend sleeping in your plugs. A, it's a good way of stopping your ears overstretching if you're at your goal size. Because obviously if you wear like glass and stone plugs like I do, if I wore them 24-7, then my ears would continue to naturally stretch. So by taking them out, I make sure my ears aren't overstretching compared to what I, the size I want. This is my goal size, so I don't want them to get any bigger. Um, and also it's more comfortable to sleep. You can try like the silicon ear skins, like the Chaos, Soft Chaos Software and stuff. I've had mixed results with silicon. I've found the very thin, cheapo ones from Amazon. I've been absolutely fine with. I can sleep in them. My ears like them. The thicker silicon ones, my ears hate them. They don't like it. It just irritates my ears. So silicon can be hit and miss depending on whether your body likes it or not, if your skin's sensitive. Um, and... If you are stretching your ears, I recommend you use glass or surgical stainless steel. Don't use porous things like wood or stone. And um, stone plugs are great for healed ears. And don't use acrylic. Um, so yeah, that's a little tip on how to heal your ears if you've damaged them. And uh, just take it carefully, stretch slowly. And if you notice any spots that look a bit thin or anything downsize by about two or three sizes, massage your ears and just let them cope and um, let them like heal and thicken back up and then re-stretch. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.